Hey bag lady, today I'm going to be talking about the fast turn turning tool, some new minikins that I made this week. I'll be showing you Allison Glass Sunprints 2018. I have some new buttons from the Button Lovers Club. My book review is for Coloring with Threads by Tula Pink. I have a live zipper demo and the giveaway for tonight is from Penguin and Fish. I'm Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Okay, before we start the chat, as always, pretty much everything that I'm showing you are things that I've purchased myself, so I'm not paid to promote any of these products. They're just cool things that I found that I want to share with you. So starting off the chat, my favorite part is the notion of the week, and this is the fast turn tool, and I showed this sometime last year, but we've sort of improved our camera angles, and I wanted to give you a demo as well as tell you that now I have the fast turn tools available individually. I have the half inch tool on my website for sale, which is a lot more cost effective than the set that I own. I think I own a set of about seven or eight of the tools in various sizes, and it gets quite expensive if you're buying the full set, but I use the half inch size pretty much all the time, so um, it's available, link in the description, um, but let me give you a quick demo on how I would use this for turning tabs or straps. So this is the tool that I owned for many years and it's got this little hook on the bottom that comes up and down and this is what is used to hook into the, fa the fabric and pull to turn the tubes right side out. Um, the problem that I had with this tool is that often it would come unhooked halfway through turning the tube and so the whole piece would come out and I'd have to start over. So. Um, this one was okay, but when I found the fast turn tool, which is this right here, it was a lifesaver. So what the tool is comprised of is it's got this tube, and this is the half inch size. This is the one that I use 99% of the time. And it comes with this um, handle on sort of a wire, and it's got uh, like a corkscrew on the end. And the corkscrew is the part that hooks onto your fabric and turns the fabric right side out. So. I've pre-sewn a couple of things. First I've got uh, a tab that I sewed, just a simple rectangular tab, and I went ahead and already sewed two pieces of fabric right sides together using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So let me show you first how I would turn a tab. So you just separate the fabric so that you can get the tube on the inside. And the tube goes all the way to the end, and then this part goes inside the tube. And you push it all the way through, and you kind of turn it till that corkscrew comes out the fabric on the other end. So here's, here's that corkscrew that came out through the fabric and then the corkscrew grabs the fabric and it just pulls it through the tube. So it's really easy. Even if you have interfacing on these pieces, it'll go through nice and easy. But then you just kind of unscrew that corkscrew out of the fabric and then obviously you'd use a turning tool and press this tab before you attach it to the bag. Um, let me show you, I also sewed a bigger, longer piece right sides together to simulate perhaps a strap. Um, I know in my Cumberland backpack I use this technique for turning the strap right side out. Again, you're just going to put the tube through and the fabric just bunches up over here. That's why this plastic piece is on here to hold the fabric. So I pushed it all the way through and again I'm going to put this corkscrew piece through the other end. And as you can see, there's that corkscrew. So that's going to grab onto my fabric and pull it through the tube. And nice and easy, no fear of it coming unhooked. But that's how the turning tool works. And again, um, it's great for tabs too, like this little one. Sometimes I work with tabs that are different shapes. And again, this is a lifesaver as opposed to the old tool that I used over here. So anyway, this is the fast turn tool. If you're interested in finding out more, um, the link is in the description. Okay, so I wanted to show you a couple projects that I made this week. We filmed three more videos for the Minikins, so if you're not familiar with the Minikins, there are 12 projects, so 12 patterns uh, with accompanying videos, and they're all smaller accessories. A lot of them use up fat quarters, so it's really nice to work through maybe a fat quarter bundle that you have in your stash. Um, but the first one I wanted to show you is the desktop cube and I made this out of a fabric that's coming out soon from Tula Pink and it's called All Stars. 
Um, so Tula used some of her best-selling fabric prints and reimagined them in different colors. So this is from her Acacia fabric line, and this is the large size desktop cube, and I'm using it to hold a couple skeins of yarn. Um, I haven't started this knitting project yet, but maybe I'll get to it one day. Um, but this is the desktop cube. Um, I have another one that we filmed a video for. This is the Moto pouch, which uh, this is size large, and I used an older print from Melody Miller um, when she was with Coca, and this is sort of a linen, um, linen fabric. Um, but anyway, this is a nice size um, pencil pouch or cosmetics, and it also comes in a size small. And then third is the Morsel lunch bag. So I made this one for my daughter. She takes horseback riding lessons, and I had this fabric in my stash. Um, the fabric is designed by Sarah Jane from Michael Miller Fabrics. It's a few years old, but I used some cotton and steel basics for the lining and for sort of the accents around the handle. Um, but this one's got a recessed zipper on the inside. I used a pink zipper just to sort of um, use some of my daughter's favorite colors. Um, but anyway, this is the Morsel lunch bag, and this one's really cute and actually deceptively quick to put together. But anyway, I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments. Um, do you sew for any kids? So maybe your own kids, grandkids. Um, neighbors children or maybe you're a teacher and you're sewing gifts for others but let me know in the comments I really want to know do you sew for kids just let me know yes or no if you want to elaborate that's fine too uh, I tend to mostly make accessories for my kids when they were little I really thought I'd be sewing all of their clothes for them like every single outfit but I think that was extremely overly ambitious because um, when they're babies and toddlers there's just no time for all that extra stuff so um, I tend to like to sew accessories for them because they can use them for several years at a time instead of outgrowing clothes. So um, that's, that's what I like to sew for my kids. But let me pop through and check some of the comments right now, see what people are replying with. Um, Debbie's sewing for her own kids. Um, Gwenna has grandkids, great nieces, nephews. And then, oh, Halloween costumes. Jamie says she's sewing Halloween costumes. That's a good one. I wish, I wish I had more time to sew Halloween costumes. Um, for a few years, I went to a trade show that always happened like on Halloween weekend, and so I just didn't have enough extra energy for, for sewing stuff for my kids. But, um, oh, I see another comment coming through. Rita says, um, first time viewer saw part of last week's show and decided I want to make it to the live stream. Um, Rita sews for great nieces and nephews. Thanks so much for joining us live this time, Rita. Um, all right, so I, I showed you the notion of the week. The fabric of the week is a bundle that I just got in the mail a couple days ago that I wanted to share with you. Um, but these are designed by Allison Glass, and this is from her Sun Prince 2018 fabric line. So lots of great colors. They're all um, what some people call blenders or monochromatic fabrics, and monochromatic is usually a main color with um, either a muted secondary color of, in the same color family or white. So let me show you. These are a lot of fabrics to go through, but very beautiful. So this is the first design is called Diatom, and these are all in the same design. So it's got sort of a geometric print on there with, um, I'm not sure if there, that's, uh, I'm not sure, that's some sort of sea creature. <laughs> Um, but the colors are great. This is my favorite color from this particular um, design. And white. White, I really love white fabrics with a design because um, I like using them as background fabrics. And I think it's interesting for added visual interest to have not only white but some sort of little design in there. So the second design is called Depths. And this is probably my favorite um, grouping of colors. So let me show you some of these. And the colors are really great. And this is a really beautiful purple, too. And again, um, the white. I don't know if you can see it really well on your screen, but this has got that, that same design with the white background. So before I show you the third design in the collection, uh, my husband's going to put a photograph up on the screen. And this is a quilt that I made last year with Allison's previous Sun Prints fabrics. So this is a baby quilt that I made for my brother. He was expecting his first child last year. Um, and I made this using the 
Milky, Milky Way sampler quilt pattern. If you're interested in finding out more about that quilt pattern, the link's in the description. Um, but this is foundation paper piece, and I used all sun prints, and I used some of her previous, um, that's actually not straight up white solid background, that's um, her sun prints and other fabric designs with mostly white. So um, that's a baby quilt that I made for my brother. And this is the third grouping of uh, designs. This is called Compass. And these are sort of more rich colors, but again, great to round out the other two designs. And this purple is amazing too. I love this purple so much. And again, this is a great white. It's sort of almost got like a goldish design on top of the white, so this one's great as well. Anyway, this is um, Allison Glass Sun Prince 2018. She still has some of previous year's Sun Prince designs available, so again, check the link in the description. It'll take you to her website, or you can find these at your local quilt shop. Okay, so besides the fabric that I added to my stash, I'm a big fan of the Button Lovers Club, and Button Lovers Club is a monthly cl club that features handmade buttons, and they're usually, um, if a hol certain holiday is coming up, they're usually a, you know, a, a seasonal design, so Valentine's Day is coming up, so I just wanted to show you the box that I got um, this month. Um, sometimes the, the box comes with a free pattern, an embroidery or an applique pattern, um, but this is what comes in the box. And this is the assortment of the handmade buttons. So there's always usually a packet or two of these really small buttons. So this is um, the apple color of the larger handmade buttons. And there's usually a packet of different designs. So let me open this packet up so you can see it. So it's got this really cute envelope for Valentine's Day. There's this bee. Everything's in the same color scheme, a ladybug. So um, I'm really looking forward to using these. I would, thought I would try them in some sort of a hoop design, maybe with some applique to go with it, but big fan of the buttons. I'm growing quite a stash of buttons. I've got a little Tupperware box with a lid, um, so I'm keeping the buttons coming. But let me know. I have a question for you. Do you make anything with buttons? I mean, besides the obvious, which would be uh, clothing, maybe a button-down shirt or something. Let me know in the comments. I'm curious to know. Do you make anything with buttons? If so, what is it? Let me know. Um, or if you have some ideas for what I could use with my Button Lovers Club buttons, my Valentine's buttons, um, let me know in the comments. I'm curious to know. And uh, la -la -la, let's see what's coming through. Pamela, hi from Tennessee. Hi, Pamela. Pamela is joining on YouTube. So we're streaming live on both Facebook and YouTube. So um, there's a mixture of both YouTubers and Facebookers on tonight. Um, Colleen says, oh my gosh, I'll have to join that Button Lovers Club. Thanks for keeping the comments going. Um, if you've noticed lately, we've been putting the comments on the screen. So if you have any questions later in the chat, I hope, I hope to be answering those live. But um, keep those comments coming. I love seeing them. All right, so yesterday uh, what I did, I, my kids both had friends over. So my son had a friend over in the morning to play video games. And in the evening, my daughter had a friend over. And I took both of the girls to see a movie, The Greatest Showman. I meant to see this movie on Christmas Day, um, sort of when it came out, when it was newer in the theaters. But uh, we just got busy over the holidays. But I finally got to see it. And if you're not familiar with it, it's sort of a fictionalized story of Barnum starting his circus and taking all of society's misfits and taking them in and sort of showcasing them. Um, as part of his circus and the thing I liked best about the movie was all of the original singing and and the music. I thought the music music was great. When I got home I listened to the soundtrack right away and I thought m pretty much all of the songs were great. Uh, songs that I would expect to hear on the radio. There was dancing as well. It was pretty much constant action throughout the movie but it wasn't um, the singing wasn't irritating and actually the version that we went to see yesterday was um, I, I didn't know it beforehand, but a sing-along, so they actually had, it was sort of like karaoke, they had the words coming up on the screen. I suppose for maybe people who had seen the movie already once or twice already, there was a little girl in our row, it was so cute, but she was singing all of the songs and she would get up out of her seat when a, a song came on and she was singing them really loud and in a beautiful voice, so I thought it was really cool. Obviously it was our first time hearing those songs, so we weren't familiar with them, but 
Um, it was great fun, and I would definitely see it again. Um, I don't know if anybody out there has seen The Greatest Showman yet, but uh, let me know in the comments what you thought about it. Um, I certainly loved it. Uh, the girls loved it, too. Um, my book review for this week, I'm going to step over here to the side to show you the book, but my book review for this week is uh, Coloring with Thread by Tula Pink. It's an embroidery book uh, that recently came out. I got mine right after Christmas, but as we were down uh, with Facebook Live for a little bit, I didn't get to show you until now. Um, but first of all, the book comes with a CD at the back, so you can print out the designs or if you want to print them to transfer paper. But um, I really appreciated the stitch sort of library at the beginning of the book. I was expecting, I think, to have maybe four stitches illustrated, but as you can see, there's a lot of different stitches illustrated, so you can use all of these different stitches, maybe learning some new um, for the projects. So yeah, that's a lot of stitches, I thought. Okay, and then, of course, Tula's using her designs to show you projects and give you ideas for embroidery projects based on her artwork. So um, let me just flip through some of these. Um, there's some different suggested thread colors and s suggested stitches, but obviously you could use um, whatever your heart desires. Um, I liked, as a fan of polka dots, I liked um, seeing some examples of not only solid colors for the back background fabric, but um, this great, great, great and white polka dot I thought was amazing. Let me flip through some more of these too. And some of these are, you know, classic old school Tula designs. Uh, let me find my favorite one though. The seahorse, um, I love the sea, here it is. Here's the seahorse. This is one of my favorites. And. There was another one that I wanted to show you. The deer is amazing too. That's from Moonshine. The duck that's sort of hidden in the florals. Horses, of course. That's my favorite, the frog. Um, so anyway, there's a lot of great designs in here. Um, I love the different stitches. I'm going to try some of the new stitches, new to me stitches. Um, but anyway, if you're interested in finding out more about this, check the link in the description. The link is actually going to be taking you to um, a signed copy of this book. So if you want a copy signed by Tula Pink herself, check the link in the description. And I can't wait to make some hoop art with this book. All right, so now the time has arrived in the show where I ask um, for all my bag ladies out there to let me know in the comments. and. Um, it makes me so excited. I noticed last week when I asked for um, this comment. So let me know in the comment, first of all, if you're a bag lady and be proud about it. Say, I'm a bag lady. Let me know in the comments. But I was really excited to see last week that there were a lot of people that said they were new bag ladies or working up to being bag ladies. And I think that's great because I'm obviously a super duper bag lady and I want everybody else to share in the bag making love. So uh, let me know in the comments. I'm going to post a few of these. Uh, bag ladies. All right. I see Kathy says, sisters watching tonight. I think that's awesome. Donnell in my Facebook group uh, is watching on YouTube. She says she's a bag lady. Kelly says, proud bag lady here. Sadie, I'm a bag lady. So yeah, thanks. Thanks so much for joining me all, my bag ladies. All right. So today... For Social Sunday, normally we show uh, an instructional video near the end. This week, I wanted to give you sort of a, a live zipper demonstration. So let me pull some of my zippers over here. But anyway, I get a lot of questions uh, regarding zippers for specific patterns. So the questions are usually if people want to use a different type of zipper, um, if they can swap it out. Um, so let me start off. First of all, some of my patterns, I specify a certain zipper in the pattern. And that's usually a very strong recommendation to use that zipper. And I usually have my reasons. So um, when I ask for a certain zipper, usually it's because that size of zipper, and by that I mean the width of that particular zipper, will fit exactly in the project. Um, sometimes it's for ease of sewing. So perhaps a specific zipper will be easier to sew than another one. If I don't specify in the pattern, that generally means that it's okay to use whatever zipper your heart desires. But let me walk you through a few of these zippers, tell you about them, anything special that you need to know about them. Um, but here's the first one. This is a number three, also known as a dress slash skirt zipper. 
This one has the smaller pole and the zipper tape is about 7 eighths of an inch wide. So I use these in some specific patterns like the annex double zip box pouch pattern, the filigree double zip pouch pattern. And when I specify to use this certain zipper, it's because the, the, the project is put together using this and it'll fit exactly. So that's the number three dress skirt zipper. A handbag zipper is also another common one for bag making. So handbag zippers usually have the larger pull. The, the zipper tape is usually about an inch and a quarter wide and sometimes they even have two pulls like this one. So this one's got two pulls. These pulls are already on the tape. It comes like this. Um, sometimes people think that if they, they see one of my projects, like the Crimson and Clover train cases with the two poles, that I put that extra pull on there. Um, I sell handbag zippers in my online shop with the two poles already on them. So that's a handbag zipper. That's another type of zipper. This is not really used for bag making, but I wanted to show it anyway because I occasionally get a question, people asking about an invisible zipper. So an invisible zipper, if you're not familiar, usually used for dresses or skirts, but it's invisible because when the zipper is sewn in, you can only see that pull. So you don't see the tape or the teeth, um, just the pull. I've never used it for a bag. Um, I'm not sure that I would, but I just wanted to show you that zipper just so you're familiar with what it looks like. I've got another zipper. This is also known as a sport zipper. So when I first started making bags, I loved using sport zippers, uh, but now I think I would steer clear of them. Sport zippers usually have the chunky plastic teeth. The tape is usually wider, similar to the handbag zipper with the one and a quarter of an inch wide tape. And it's got usually this big zipper head with the, the bigger pull. So the reason that I would stay clear from this zipper, and lately I've been getting a few comments also in my Facebook group, group about this particular zipper. So for a project such as this one, so this is my Creative Maker Supply case, and as you can see, it's got the zipper that wraps around most of the case. But anyway, using a sports zipper in a project like this where you have to go around turns like this is very difficult. Not, not impossible, but it gets really trying when you have to pin this wide zipper tape and maneuver around these chunky zipper teeth. So especially for projects with a curve like this one, I would stay clear of a sport zipper or something with chunky plastic teeth like this. All right. There's also zippers with metal teeth, which I'll talk about more in one second. But I also wanted to show you about trimming a zipper, how to do that. So when I work with zippers, some of my patterns call for trimming a zipper to an exact length. And so that length is from where you would cut the zipper to the other end of the cut zipper. So the reason that I like to cut zippers, and let me show you on the number three zipper also, I like to avoid the beginning of the zipper because it's sort of got like this gap over here. And I also like to avoid the end of the zipper because it's got this metal stop that will break a needle unless you remove it. So sewing near this or on top of that will break a needle. So when I'm measuring to cut a zipper, I always like to measure the middle of the zipper so I can avoid those two areas. So let me show you how I would trim a zipper. So first I have this handbag zipper that I already measured and marked um, 17 inches for what I was going to cut this for a project for. And so I would mark directly on the zipper tape 17 inches. So, so this is where the 17 inches starts and this is where the 17 inches is going to end. So what I do, since the zipper is going to be cut, I always like to create a new zipper stop with thread. And so to do that, I stitched, as you can see with this pink thread, I stitched back and forth a few times. Um, it's called a bar tack, and that creates a new stop. So when you cut it, then you can't unzip the zipper head off the tape because that will create some headaches for you. So after that new stop is made, then it's okay to go and cut that zipper at that marking that you made for, um, in my case, the exact 17 inches. And same thing on the other end, cutting it. Um, depending on what your seam allowance is, you might be able to stitch a little bit farther away from the mark. So if you're using a half inch seam allowance, here I stitched a quarter of an inch away from where I was going to cut. And over here for a quarter of an inch seam allowance, I would stitch a little closer. So this is an eighth of an inch. And as you can see with that new stop, then you can't accidentally unzip the zipper off the tape, which saves you a lot of headaches because it's 
Um, I certainly don't like putting the zipper head back on the tape after I've, I've unzipped it off. Okay, so back to that um, metal zipper that I showed you earlier. Oftentimes when you're using a metal zipper, you don't want to be sewing over the teeth or else you should hand crank when sewing over the teeth. Um, but there's an easy way to remove some of these metal teeth so you can, act, you can perhaps fold the tape over so you don't have extra teeth over here. Let me fold this one over so see so you wouldn't be want, want to be sewing over those teeth. So to remove some of the teeth, um, I have a side cutter and this is just a regular size side cutter. You can find this at the craft store where the jewelry making supplies are and this is what the package looks, looks like from the one I purchased. Um, this one I purchased from Michaels and the brand is Bead Landing, but any brand would be okay. Um, but this is a side cutter and what you do is you just bring the edge of the side cutter up to the teeth and it just sort of clips the teeth off. So let me, let me see if I can uh, get one of these teeth to come off over here. Of course I pulled off a bunch of teeth before we started and now uh, because I'm on camera I'm a little bit nervous so I'm probably not going to be, let's see if I can get it off, yeah there we go. So you kind of just scrunch it with the um, side cutter and then the, the tooth, uh, the metal tooth pops off. And there we go. I think I sort of messed that one up. Alright, there you go. So I got that tooth off and you can go ahead and remove as many teeth as you need. I also recommend using a bit of fray check on this end over here just so your um, zipper tape doesn't start to unravel. But anyway, the side cutter is pretty helpful. Again, this is what it looks like and this is for removing the metal teeth. So that's just a few going over zippers and a few questions that I commonly get in my Facebook group or via email about zippers. Um, but let me know if you have any questions. I'll try to answer some of the questions. I'll see what's been coming through. Um, in the live chat. Um, Diana says, great tip on removing the extra teeth. Um, let's see. Jeanette wanted to know um, bundles of zippers for pouches. Um, I think that's asking for where I purchase my zipper. So I have two methods for hoarding zippers. Um, I like to keep them in two different sizes in my stash because it's very difficult to have every single size of zipper in lots of different colors and so I tend to have just two different sizes in my stash. So I like to have um, 18 inch zippers in lots of colors and I also have uh, 22 inch zippers in lots of colors. Let me pull out, actually I have one of my zipper boxes down here. Um, sorry about that. These are my 22 inch zippers. As you can see I've got, I've got tons of colors in here. So when I'm working on a project, no need to pop out to the fabric store. Um, I usually have the right zipper color on hand. The reason that I like to have just those two sizes of zippers is because it's handy. The 18 inch zipper will cover everything up to 18 inches because I can trim the zipper as using that method that, that I showed you. And 22 inches will cover everything from 18 to 22. I like buying the number three dress skirt zippers from Zip It. Um, Zip It's on Etsy if you're not familiar with it, but um, I think the prices are great. Um, they have a huge color selection. Um, for handbag zippers, I sell those in my online shop. Uh, again, I have lots of different colors. Um, they're not as inexpensive as the number three zippers, but depending on the bag, I might want a handbag zipper instead and the ones that I still have the two pulls. But anyway, Zip It on Etsy is a good seller for the number three zippers. Um, let's see, some of the other questions. Uh, Sophie wanted to know what type of chalk marker did I just use? Uh, I threw it over here. Here it is. Um, let me show you on the, the close-up side view, but this is the Clover Chaco. Um, let me grab a piece of fabric here so I can show you how it works. It's got chalk in here and you can buy the replacements for this so you don't have to buy a whole new tool every time, but it's got a little wheel over here and when the wheel moves it dispenses the chalk so you just kind of, um, the wheel only goes one way, but it as you as you write, it dispenses the chalk, and then when your project's done, it, it wipes away, but it, in my opinion, it stays put long enough for you to do whatever you need to do, whether it's um, machine quilting or cutting out pattern pieces. I like this for marking areas of the bag, so for instance, strap placement, if I'm marking the strap placement, I just mark the strap placement when I'm done stitching the strap in place, um, that wipes away. I've tried this Clover Chaco in other colors, like pink. There's pink, blue, yellow, and gray. 
and I found that the other colors for the most part don't wipe off completely just the white does so I would suggest just using the white and not the colors I made a dress for myself the background color was cream and it had green horses on it and I used the pink Chaco to mark on the fabric because it was a lighter fabric and when the dress was finished the markings didn't go away um, I tried brushing it off I tried doing different things um, I wore the dress I had to wear the dress with the pink marks on the back it was uh, the zipper area so not ideal so just go with the white Chaco if you're going to use Chaco but I love this I use this all the time um, um, let's see happy Sunday from Michigan Lori's watching from Michigan Terry wants to know how do you pick the zipper color um, I try to match it to um, a, a portion of the fabric so let me just show you one of these fabrics close up most fabrics have on the salvage little circles uh, and these are the colors that are included in the fabric so this fabric is not just the one purple it's got other colors as well so if you're working from a fabric like for example this one like I used for my lunch bag this one has those little dots in the salvage too they all do and it's really easy to pick one of the colors from the salvage dots and match your zipper color so for example something like this you can match um, a lot of fabrics have tons of colors like it would be really easy to match a zipper color to this but I try not to be too exacting because there's only so many zipper possible zipper colors out there there's not going to be a hundred percent match for every fabric so I just try to get as close as possible as I can to the the zipper color with the project that I'm working on all right let's see some other questions um, they're coming through fast so I'm going to try to get to any of them that I miss um, all right so Carla says did not know that's what the dots were for um, on the salvages yeah it's mostly an aid for the fabric manufacturers to get the colors correctly and for the designers to check the colors on the fabrics Tina says um, I use freight check for a variety of things great product to keep on hand haven't used it on zippers though so yeah this was the freight check that I, I showed before and there's other brands available too. Uh, fray brought Spray black is another one basically it's just a seam sealant it helps when cutting the fabric it keeps it from fraying um, Suzanne oh clicked on the wrong one Suzanne wants to know what scissors do you like so I've got let me pull a couple scissors out here where's my Tula scissors all right Tula pink um, these are my Tula Pink scissors. I super love these and I showed, if you caught the Social Sunday last week, I showed the rotary cutter so it's a matching metal. I've also got these Kai scissors. These are another favorite. These are Kai, it's K-A-I, and my personal favorite is model number 7205. So I like these a lot. They've got the rubber grips and the handles. They cut, they're really sharp. They cut really well. But these are the two scissors that I use in my sewing room. Um, I seem to be always lacking scissors, pa you know, paper scissors in particular. Every everybody in my family is always coming in my sewing room and snagging my paper scissors. So when it comes time for me to cut like paper pattern pieces out, I've only got fabric scissors, and I don't want to use fabric scissors for paper, especially the Tula ones. Um, Karen wants to know: Do you use Aurifil thread to sew your bags? Yes, I use Aurifil. I like 40 weight thread. Let me. I've got my Aurifil stash behind me over here. Um, let me pick out two of the ones that I've got. These are the different thread weights that I like to use. So the green spool is the 40 weight thread. So the numbers go in reverse order. So the smaller the number, the thicker the thread. So this is 40 weight thread. This is what I like to use for bag making. In a pinch, if I need a certain color, um, I would use 50 weights um, if I needed this color that I had on hand. 50 weights on the orange spools. I've also got some 12 weight on red spools, which are in my sewing drawer over there. Let me see if I can pull one out really quick without making everything fall on the ground. All right, here's my 12 weight. Um, these are okay for top stitching, but in the machine, you need to use <clears throat> a smaller weight in the bobbin. So if I was using 12 weight or fill for top stitching, I would use the 40 weight in the bobbin. Um, it's just, <coughs> excuse me, too hard on the machine using 12 weight in the top and the bottom. So these are the, the weights of Aurifil that I have in my stash. Let's see if there were any other questions that I can answer for you guys tonight. <coughs> uh, 
Oh, this is a good one. I need this one. Debbie says uh, she buys paper scissors by the three pack at Costco and they still go missing. <laughs> Kelly says I love my Tula Pink hardware. Oh, the giveaway. I almost forgot. I started answering questions and I forgot the giveaway. But let me show you the giveaway for this week. I wanted to let you know that last week's giveaway winner, so last week's giveaway was an $80 gift certificate to my website. The giveaway winner for last week was Kathy Davey. So Kathy, if you're watching tonight, email me. Or if you watch this after the fact, be sure to email me so I can send you your prize. Um, <coughs> but the giveaway for this week is, uh, oh, I put it over here, this bundle from Penguin and Fish. So first off, let me show you a couple things before we get to the actual giveaway items. But Penguin and Fish, so link is in the description, but um, this ador adorable embroidery over here is available for free to newsletter subscribers. So just go to the website if you're interested in receiving this embroidery for free. Um, she's got some great resources on different embroidery stitches. I know we talked about that Tula Pink embroidery book earlier. Penguin and Fish is also a great resource. And this is the giveaway prize. So this is three kits from Penguin and Fish. Includes the hoop, the pattern, <coughs> the floss, the needle, the transfers, everything you need to make these projects. This is probably the most well-known project from Penguin and Fish in my mind. Um, the hedgehog <coughs> and the jellyfish as well. So she's got a lot of different animal motifs on her website. Patterns, kits, lots of different things. So you want to check that out. Again, that's Penguin and Fish. And go to the Penguin and Fish website, sign up for the newsletter, get the free embroidery. <coughs> Excuse me. All you need to do to be entered into the giveaway is let me know in the comments what your favorite holiday to sew for. So just let me know. Um, if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to enter your comments after we go off from being live. For some reason, YouTube doesn't post the live comments after the recording is posted. So if you're watching on YouTube, wait until wait a few more minutes until we're off live to post your comment to be entered in the giveaway. Just let me know what your favorite holiday to sew for is I'll choose one random winner at the end of the day this upcoming Saturday at 11 p.m. Central Time. So one more thing I wanted to tell you about before I sign off for the night is I have two Facebook Live shows a week. Um, you want to be sure to watch this Tuesday. It's at 7 p.m. Central Time for my show Ask Sarah. So every week on Ask Sarah I show a video on how to make a project or so, some other informative uh, bit of talk and so this week I wanted to show you so I'll show you a, a side view on this so this Tuesday we're making easy cork or leather notebook covers so these are a few that I made here's one with just cork plain cork these are my kids old old old, old notebooks but I had a, f a couple of friends embroider some cork for me and make the leather notebook cover but um, it's a lined notebook it's basically a 10 minute project so you don't want to miss these really fast and easy. I've got the templates to make for a standard composition notebook, which you can find at the dollar store. And I'll also have covers for the Quilters Planner, which I showed the Quilters Planner last, last week on Social Sunday. But tune in this Tuesday at 7 p.m. Central Time. I'll be showing the full video on how to make this project. And this is a great project for making you look super smart um, because if you need a last minute gift, maybe a teacher's gift, a present for a party you didn't know you were going to, this is the project and it looks super professional, really easy and just uses a little bit of um, a fabric that you cut raw like leather or cork. So I'll see you on Tuesday for this project and I hope you'll join me ag again next Sunday at 7 p.m. Central Time for the next Social Sunday. Happy sewing! Ha <laughs> ha